Backyard Plus can help save you money by avoiding costly service calls for repairs you can easily do yourself. Today we are going to show you how to upgrade an IQ2000 control system to the current IQ2020 control system. The first step to this upgrade, of course, is to turn off the power to the spa. Then remove the four screws holding the equipment door in place. After removing the door, you'll see the black IQ2000 control box mounted at the front of the spa. Remove the two Phillips head screws holding the lid of the control box. Then remove the lid exposing the control system components. After removing the lid, begin disconnecting the different components of the spa. Start with the ribbon cable for the control head, then the temperature sensors, then the spa light, then the ozone receptacle, then the circulation pump. The components will vary from spa to spa, but they should all be fairly similar. Some ground terminals may be held in place with a screw that will need to be loosened first. Next, disconnect the jet pump. Then the power cord for the spa itself. The IQ2000 uses a terminal block with Phillips head screws for the power cord. Just loosen the screws and pull the wires free. Lastly, disconnect the heater power cord from the heater relay. After getting everything disconnected from the circuit board and relays, use channel lock pliers to squeeze the strain relief clamps on each of the cords together and pull each clamp free. Now that all the components are free from the control box, remove the two silver Phillips head screws in the bottom back of the control box. Then slide the control box to the right and it should drop down from the bracket. Lastly, disconnect any grounding wires that may be connected to the bonding terminal on the side of the control box. Now we need to remove the control panel. Use needle nose pliers to carefully free the clips securing the light lens at the top of the control panel. Then use a Phillips head screwdriver to remove the two screws located behind the light lens. Gently push the panel up and then pull it out of the front of the spa. Once the panel is removed, pull the back cover off of the control head. Then disconnect the aux panel cable, which is the cable with a phone jack style connection. Also, disconnect the LED light that lights the top of the control panel. We will use the same control panel with the new system we are installing, but we need to remove the old control head from it first. The connector on the old control head is not compatible with the new control system. The new control head is part number 73225 and looks very similar to the old one. It will mount on the back of the control panel the same way the current control head is mounted. As you can see there is a pretty big difference in the two connectors. There are four screws that hold the control head to the control panel. To remove the old control head from the old control panel, loosen the four screws in each corner of the control head. Remove the back from the old control head and put it in place on the back of the control panel. It shouldn't slide around once it is correctly in place. Then loosely put the four screws back in to hold the control head down.
Then go around a second time and tighten each screw just enough for it to be secure. Do not over tighten the screws. After all the screws are put back in, reconnect the control panel LED light to the back of the control head. If you plug the light in backwards, the light won't light up. So if your light doesn't work after everything is put back together, then try flipping the plug around. Then make sure the cables are routed properly and put the lid back on the control head. Now the control panel can be reinstalled into the front of the spa. Simply run the ribbon cable through the opening in the front of the spa and then place the control panel into the opening. Then re-secure the control panel with the two Phillips head screws that held it in before. Carefully reinstall the light lens to cover the control panel light and screws. The clips can break off easily, so be gentle. Next, install the provided cable wrap around the ribbon cable. This prevents the delicate ribbon cable from being damaged by coming in contact with sharp objects. Since the old spotlight is not compatible with the new control system, the next thing to replace is the spotlight. There are two replacement lights to choose from. A blue one which will run about $80 to $90, and a multicolor color changing light that will run about $250. Both lights will work great, you just have to decide if you want to be able to change the color of the light or not. The blue light comes in a plastic bag and contains only blue LEDs. It has just one 3 pin connector to power it. The multicolor light comes in a box. And as you can see, it contains several groups of three colors of LEDs which can be controlled to produce a myriad of different colors. This light also has two connectors, the three pin connector for power and the I2C connector to control the color changes. To begin swapping out the old light for the new light, start by removing the old light bulb. Then remove the three Phillips head screws that hold the light heat shield to the wall of the equipment compartment. and then remove the heat shield. If your spa was made in the year 2000 or has had the light lens replaced before, it should look similar to this from the inside of the equipment compartment. If your light lens looks like this, you should be able to install the new light directly to the light lens. Just put a bead of silicone around the new light and push it into place on the lens. Here you can see the light pops easily into place. If you have the older style light lens, then your new light won't clip into the light lens. You will have to use the old heat shield to hold it in place. Take the new light lens and set it on top of the heat shield. We will use zip ties which you can get at your local hardware store to secure the new light to the heat shield. Use a total of three zip ties to hold the light in place. Run a zip tie through one of the three loops around the edge of the light and then secure the tie to the heat shield. Do this for all three sides of the light. After all three sides of the light are tied down, cut the excess length off each zip tie. Now the light and heat shield are ready to install back in the spa. Now reinstall the heat shield back into the spa the way it was before using the same Phillips head screws to hold it to the wall of the equipment area.
Now that the new light is installed, the next thing to do is replace the temperature sensors. The sensors need to be replaced because the plugs on the old sensors aren't compatible with the new control box. Two new sensors are included with the new IQ2020 control box. And as you can see here, the plugs are very different on the new sensors. Before unscrewing the old temperature sensors from the heater, either drain the spa or clamp off the water lines to the heater using pinch-off pliers. Use a pair of channel lock pliers to loosen one of the sensors first. Then unscrew the sensor by hand. Put a new o-ring on the new sensor, then screw the sensor back in place and tighten with the channel locks. Then do the same for the other sensor. Be sure to tighten the sensors only tight enough to compress the o-ring. Do not over tighten the sensors or it will crack them. After replacing the temperature sensors, it's finally time to start putting in the new control box. The new control box will look exactly the same as the old one, except it will say IQ2020 instead of IQ2000 on the cover. After you've unwrapped the control box, push the box up into the bracket and then push it to the left. Remove the two Phillips head screws holding the lid to the control box and then remove the lid of the control box. Next use the two stainless steel Phillips head screws from before to secure the control box to the bracket. After the control box is secure, we can start reconnecting the components of the spa to it. First, connect the control head. Then route the cable through the right side of the control box. Next, plug in the aux panel. It plugs into the phone jack up in the top right of the control box. Then route the cable through the right side of the control box. Next, plug in the spa light. You'll see two connectors, one three pin connector and one I2C connector. Plug in the three pin connector into the spot where it says LED spa light. You'll notice a ridge on one side of the connector that coincides with the clip on the connector on the board. The same thing goes for the I2C connector. And then route the light cable through the right side of the control box. Next, we need to connect the temperature sensors. The connectors for the temperature sensors are located in the top right of the control box, and they are labeled Lim Therm and Reg Therm. One is for the high limit sensor and one is for the thermostat sensor. The high limit sensor has two pins and the thermostat sensor has four pins. Don't accidentally plug in the thermostat sensor to the ozone interface port, even though they both have the same number of pins. And make sure you route the temperature sensor cables out to the side of the control box as well. Next it's time to plug in the heater. You'll notice that the heater connects to the heater relay board differently than it did before. You'll need to clip off the old connectors and strip the wires back. First, clip the connectors off the black and white wires for the heater. Then use a pair of wire strippers to strip about a half an inch of insulation off the black and white wires. Then feed the wire into the control box, connect the ground wire to the ground terminal, and then connect the black wire to H1 and the white wire to H2. To connect each wire, insert a flathead screwdriver into the square terminal above the wire slot, and then pry upward with the flathead screwdriver. Be sure to tug on the connections after you've made them to make sure they're secure. Next we can connect the power cord for the spa itself to the terminal block. 
Be sure to follow the wiring diagram for your specific model hot tub in the instructions included with your new control box. First connect the ground wire to the grounding screw. Then for our model tub we need to connect the white neutral wire to the terminal 4 on the terminal block. And we need to connect the black hot wire to terminal 2. Next we need to install the power jumpers, but first we need to take out the center support bracket. It's held in by a single Phillips head screw. The power jumpers are included along with the installation instructions, which will also show the proper jumper configurations for your spa. For ours, we need to put a three-prong jumper across terminals 3, 4, and 5, and a jumper between terminals 1 and 2. We need to tear out the middle pin on a three-prong jumper so the middle pin doesn't touch the H1 terminal. Once we've put the jumpers in place, we can use a flathead screwdriver to push the jumpers in solidly. After the jumpers have been installed, we can reinstall the center support bracket. Now we need to set the program jumpers. These are located right above the screw for the center support bracket. Program jumper configurations for your specific spa can be found in the installation instructions. Set your jumpers according to the configuration found in the instructions included with your new control system. Next we can start reconnecting the rest of the electrical components, starting with the ozone receptacle. The terminals where each component should connect are labeled on the bottom edge of the circuit board. After reconnecting the ozone receptacle, we can now reconnect the jet pump. And lastly, we can reconnect the circulation pump. This is the small pump that pumps the water through the heater, and typically runs 24 hours a day. If any components, like our circulation pump, use the type of ground terminal that is secured by a screw, simply unscrew a screw next to the nearest grounding terminal and then use that screw to secure the grounding terminal for whichever component it is that needs to be secured that way. Now we can start putting the strain relief clamps back on the cords of each of the electrical components. Place the strain relief clamp around a cord and then squeeze the clamp together with a pair of channel lock pliers. Then push the clamp back up into the opening of the bottom of the control box and release. Do this for each of the components. Now we can put the lid back on the control box and secure it with the two Phillips head screws that held it on originally. After that, we can finally put the equipment door back in place. Again, it's held on with four Phillips head screws. Once the door has been installed, you can turn the power back onto the spa. Once the display lights up, you can test the different components of the spa and make sure everything works. Thanks for watching and look for our other videos designed to help you maintain and repair your spa yourself. And don't forget to visit us on the web at backyardplus.com where we make it easy for you to find anything you need for your hot springs, Tiger River, Solana, Hotspot, or Limelight Spa.